My dear elegant ladies, welcome back to my channel and to video one in my networking mini series. Ladies, today you're going to find out exactly how easy it actually is to make new friends and to achieve success in life simply by learning from these seven ladies and their stories. Okay, let's dive into lady number one. Lady number one is Carolyn Bessette Kennedy, and she was a socialite. She's unfortunately not with us today, bless her soul, but ladies, I would really like to start with her because her transformation story is incredibly inspirational because she didn't come from a wealthy background and yet she was able to marry a Kennedy. But how was she able to do that? Well, let's start from the beginning. So Carolyn started off as a saleswoman for Calvin Klein and she worked hard. She later got promoted from the floor of selling clothes at Calvin Klein to become the brand's Manhattan um, publicity director. Wonderful. That gave her great access to parties, to events, and to mingling with the right people. Now, back in the days, Carolyn was actually known to carry herself with grace and having this really chic, minimalistic style. And this was exactly what made her noticed within the company because her colleague at Calvin Klein offered her a special position where she was able to deal with the brand's high profile clients. Now, guess who her high-profile client ended up being? Well, of course, the country's most eligible bachelor at the time and son of the previous US president, John F. Kennedy Jr. Jackpot! Sometimes ladies don't underestimate what your job can do for you. So these two were therefore introduced to each other during this private viewing and he was instantly smitten by Carolyn. So to cut the story short, the couple got married and as you know, the rest is history. But ladies, there's of course more to her story than this and actually, you know me, I always want to provide you with the very best. So I'm going to actually do a deep dive on Carolyn Bassett because there is so much that we can learn from her story. But what I think it's important to point out today is that when you carry yourself with elegance and when you present yourself like this gracious, beautiful, elegant woman, well, you are going to be then noticed by the right people and that's going to open up doors and opportunities for you like it did for Carolyn and this way she was able to turn her life around. Around. Now ladies, if you feel that Carolyn's socializing skills are way out of your league, don't worry. I have something for you because I have actually created a workbook for you to follow along in this networking mini series and it has plenty of exercise so that you can improve your socializing skills by the end of this three part mini series. Get this workbook on networkingminiseries.com and don't forget it's absolutely free. It will definitely give you loads of help. So let's continue with our networking success stories and we have lady number two, Amal Clooney. So, as you all know, Amal Clooney is a Hollywood wife, but she's primarily a famous lawyer. But ladies, how do you think our dear elegant Amal was able to bag Hollywood's ultimate bachelor, George Clooney, and position herself as a celebrity and style icon on top of that? Well, thanks to her social skills. So, Amal has always positioned herself among the elite through getting into leading universities like Oxford and NYU. And of course, thanks to her great career of being this prominent lawyer. So education is key. Remember how much I've been talking about that. So as a result, she has been able to really expand and work on her network from a young age because of all the schools and all the places of education where she has been spending her time. And you know, through education, education it's actually quite easier to meet people and in fact she was able to meet George Clooney through a person in her amazing network that she had been accumulating for years. So Amal therefore got introduced to George actually also to his parents at the same time through a mutual friend 
who happened to be George's talent agent. You see, one day she was visiting Le Como, where George has his house, and his mutual friend casually invited Amal to George's home. And then, you know, George and Amal hit it off. <laughs> and that was, ladies, the beginning for their marriage and for their relationship, just because she was introduced to him by a friend. My story is similar on how I met my husband, even though he's not George Clooney, but I had a friend of mine introducing me to him, which is why I keep stressing so much about how important your network is, because oftentimes this is exactly how women or people end up being introduced to each other through other people. Lady number three, Tara Fela de Rotoy. And please excuse me, Tara, if I did mispronounce your surname. This lady is from Nigeria and she's a beauty entrepreneur. So I find this story to be a fabulous example of a lady finding success and then using that as a platform to lift other women up. Tara is the founder of House of Tara, which is Nigeria's first locally owned and professional makeup company. So Tara and her brand are now known across Africa and internationally, but now you need to hear about how she got there. You see, Tara's parents they were only government employees with no special background in business whatsoever. Yet she was able to achieve success and she started her journey by training herself as a lawyer and that made her have a strong academic background. So later she decided to pursue her interest in makeup and actually went on to found her brand already in 2008. Now Tara got her big break when she was featured in the media as the makeup artist at a wedding of a well-known Nigerian couple in 2000. Yes, quite a while ago. So what's interesting with Tara's story is that she does surround herself in this network of women and also women who are influential. And that's really important, ladies, to surround yourself with other successful women, also other older women, because you are then able to gain access to their experience and also, of course, to their network. I am, by the way, not saying at all that this is perhaps the only reason to why Tara had success with her business. Not at all. She has also actually mentioned in the interviews that thanks to her husband's business background, she has been also able to get loads of help from that way. But she has been saying in interviews that a woman's network is so incredible, important, and really needs to be looked after. Even if you do some really small gestures like checking in regularly to the lady by a simple phone call or a little text. And I think that it really shows that when you are uniting yourself with other women, instead of feeling that you are always in competition with other women, you can actually have great success, really. As a result, Tara has been listed in Forbes as one of the Africa's 50 most powerful women. And today she uses her platform to give back by mentoring young women. So. I think that this was a very interesting story because I also want to use my platform to empower other women and actually build a tribe of women who help each other further. And really pay attention to this, ladies, because like I said, we don't always have to be competing with each other. We can actually lift each other up, support each other, and help each other forward, which is actually going to help us forward as well. But ladies, I know that many of us unfortunately do struggle today um, with finding female friends and I have been there myself as well in the past and as a result I have actually something that I really want to share with you because I have been secretly working on something in the last year or over a year now to help you improve your social circle and especially to help you improve your female network which is so important. Now I'm gonna be a party pooper and say that I cannot really reveal just yet what it is, but I can tell you one thing is that this is going to be an incredible tool for you if you want to make new friends. So stay tuned and don't miss my webinar on May 10th because there I'm going to drop you a little bit more information. Lady number four, Tessie Anthony de Nassau. So she's from Luxembourg, a businesswoman and a nonprofit executive, and also, last but not least, a a former princess. Now I'm going to tell you that Tessie of Luxembourg is the most interesting princess story that you have never heard of. 
Well, okay, I should actually say former princess, but let me start with the beginning of her story. Because Tessie came from an average family background and joined Luxembourg's army at the age of 18. There she met her future husband, Prince Louis of Luxembourg, who would have, by the way, thought that you can meet your future husband in the army, who happens to be a prince. Well, anyway, she was able to meet him when she was in the military through her network because he was also in the military at that time. So, to cut the story short, she went on from being this regular person to the front page of news overnight when the story broke that they were expecting a baby before even being married. The couple did go on to marry later the same year. Their son was born and actually went on to also have a second child. But I know that I've told you quite a few times now that aristocratic circles are basically the most difficult groups to gain acceptance in. But despite these difficulties, it seems that Tessie was actually accepted over some time. Not saying it happened overnight, but eventually she did get fully accepted. However, I think there were many contributions towards that, definitely her personal style and her personal brand helped her tremendously because she really did go from the plain Jane to become an aristocratic wife. So using the network and the opportunities that became available for her as she became this new royal, Tessie went on to pursue high-level academic qualifications and she actually ended up winning several awards and started businesses and charities. Unfortunately, Tessie and Louis' relationship ended in divorce and her title of princess got also taken away. But you know what? She has still been able to manage to keep her royal image, even after all of these kind of bad things that happened. She did say, however, in an interview that the divorce, especially initially, really badly did affect her network. And I think that we're talking now, you know, within the actual royal circles, within the elite. But she was able to still recover from that little blow and continue to tap into her network by moving on to new projects and starting new businesses, like she started a business consultancy service. Now, Tessie has shared a few tips about her networking skills, and she said that the most important part of networking is actually to look after your contacts and really nurture those relationships. Which, ladies, not to tap my own little shoulder, but I have been saying this for years. Because this is actually how you end up having success long term with networking is when you look after the seeds that you have planted and make sure that you can harvest them later. Now, Tessie has reinvented herself once again, including a recent announcement of an engagement to a successful Swiss businessman and a new pregnancy. So even though from plain Jane to a royal to not being a royal anymore, still she was able to continue her journey of personal upgrade and have her happy early after. Lady number five, Queen Leticia of Spain, also known formerly as a journalist. Now ladies, as you know from the Tessie story, not every royal was born into aristocracy. And Queen Leticia of Spain is a classic example of how you can actually use networking in your career to completely elevate your own social circle. So she started off working as a journalist and a news anchor in Spain and Mexico, placing herself as a prominent national broadcaster and making tons of connections in her industry. It was those connections that benefited her greatly in her life and that also led her to meet King Felipe. So he actually spotted her on TV one day and asked a mutual journalist friend to set them up. And this mutual friend did exactly that several months later at a dinner party that he had hosted. Fast forward, these two lovebirds are married and Leticia is the queen of Spain. Her career in journalism, ladies, certainly paid off. And this is another great example how it's all about getting access to the right people. And sometimes that can easily be done through your work and your industry that you work in. Number six, Carolina Herrera. 
also known as a fashion designer. So networking success isn't always necessarily as a result of new friendships and contacts, because sometimes you actually have to look within your own family and see what you can find there. So a lady who has experienced success this way is the much loved fashion designer, Carolina Herrera. She was actually introduced to fashion through working for her family friend, Emilio Pucci, who I love by the way, as his publicist. Yes, Carolina was Emilio Pucci's publicist. I had no idea about that. And of course, ladies, it's very lucky that her family knew Emilio Pucci because he was certainly able to help Help her open up a few doors. Now, Carolina moved from Emilio Pucci's Caracas boutique to one in New York where she would go to places like Studio 54 and mingle with the well known crowds of socialized artists and celebrities back in the good old fun days. So as she was involved in that party scene, she became actually known for her kind of dramatic flamboyant style and ended up even making it to the international best dress list. Sometimes all you need to do is to become a little bit of a party girl and make a name for yourself. And this is actually a great example of how the party scene or the social scene when you're young and crazy can sometimes plant seeds and open up a few doors for you. So what happened actually, as she was out and about back in the days, thanks to a friend that she knew, who introduced her to Vogue's then editor-in-chief, who suggested and really did encourage her to start her own clothing line. So this is not something that she wanted to do from the day she was born, no. This came later to her and this came to her as a pure coincidence. So. This is why it's so important to surround yourself with like-minded women who kind of share the same values and visions as you because they might actually give you some new interesting ideas, things that you have never thought about before. Because who knows, if Carolina would never have met back then um, the editor-in-chief of Vogue, maybe nobody would have encouraged her to start her own fashion line. But thankfully she did, and today she is a global luxury fashion brand worn by the masses of celebrities and public figures and really has made a name for herself. Number seven, Gabrielle Coco Chanel, also known as one of the world's most famous fashion designer. Ladies, the last success story for today, but don't worry, I have more in the Anna Bay oven for you in future videos, so stay tuned and make sure you are subscribed to this channel. But let's talk about Gabrielle Coco Chanel, the woman behind the world's probably most iconic fashion house we all love, Chanel. So her story is incredible because it began in France where she was a cabaret performer. She was also a seamstress at the time, but while working at this cabaret, she would get exposure to some interesting fashion executives, like one who was a textile ayer, Etienne Balzan, who became her lover after meeting her at one of her performances. Well, actually, it's not too much of a shabby story because she ended up living together with Etienne. They moved into a castle in Royal Le and led an opulent lifestyle, socializing in real high society circles. Now pay attention ladies, because the reason to why her connection to Etienne was so valuable is because through him she was able to meet an English socialite and a polo player, Arthur Boy Capel, although that might be pronounced way differently. Excuse me ladies. Anyway, this was definitely the most significant connection for Coco Chanel because not only <laughs> did he become her next lover, he also financed her ever first shops and apparently was the inspiration behind her classic Chanel look. So even the famous boy bag was actually named after him, believe it or not. Now ladies, this gives you such a good example of if it wasn't for Chanel's networking, we would never have been wearing those beautiful Chanel jackets and the boy bag, and who knows what we'll be wearing instead. All I'm trying to say is that even though networking might sound daunting and you might freak out and kind of just want to go and hide if you are an introvert or a little bit of an ambivert, but please don't worry ladies because this networking mini series that I'm sharing with you right now is really going to put you on the map for making new friendships. 
On Sunday, I'm actually sharing the second part of this networking mini series where I will give you five hacks all networking pros use to improve their social game. So make sure you set a reminder for yourself by visiting networkingminiseries.com and subscribe to my reminders. Plus, don't forget to download the free workbook where you have plenty of exercises on networking. And trust me, this is going to make you become a stellar social butterfly after you are done with my mini series. In the next video, I talk about Kate Middleton and I really go in depth on her networking skills because guess how she was able to break into Royal House? It wasn't only because she was very cute and very well dressed. Now ladies, I will see you in that video.